Hi everybody, this will be part 8 in the Solar System Animation Tutorial Series in Maya. Last video we talked about how to set up a motion path animation with the spaceship. So I'm going to hit play here and we have all of our motion set up in here. We have our rotate based planet motion. Uh, we have our scale based sun motion. We have our movement based asteroid motion. You can see it on the bottom right of the screen now. And then we have our spaceship based uh, motion path animation here. So those are the four major types of animation that we're going to incorporate within this project. This video we're going to talk about just finalizing some of the motion and uh, finalizing the project in general. So if I zoom out and take a look at my planet's motion, um, what happens actually when I create two keyframes, one on frame one, one on frame 360, is that it actually starts off the motion slow, speeds up in the middle, and then ends the animation slow as well. So for the first 60 or so frames, each planet starts off animating slowly around the sun. Around frame 180 is as fast as speed or velocity. And the last 60 frames or so, it's slowing down back to frame 360. Well, that might be the occasion of what we want to do sometimes, but for a solar system animation, we don't want the planets to stop their motion in their orbit. So what we're going to do is just change the way the curve is set up for the planets so that way we have a constant velocity uh, in the uh, animation of the planets. So uh, let's just start with Mercury. I'll show you that to begin with. So let's watch Mercury. So Mercury starts off slow. It starts to spin around really fast. And then it's going to end its motion in a slower standpoint. The way keyframe based animation is actually produced is through a graph. So if I go to Windows, animation editors and the graph editor minimize this pull it over here to this screen scale it down so we can see it a little bit uh, is represented by a graph so basically we're plotting points of a value our vertical attributes of value over time our horizontal attribute is a is the time so basically if I hit play you can see how it's creating this over time it starts off with this value of zero on frame one and then ends on frame 360 with a value of you know, 42 whatever it is or whatever the value was we decided earlier um, but you can see with the curve uh, it's not a constant curve and if we have a lower slope or flatter slope of the curve that means the motion is slower if the slope is more vertical that means the motion is faster so slower motion to begin with, faster motion in the middle, slower motion in the end. What we want to do is change the way this curve is set up. So this is really only the rotate Y axis, uh, rotate Y attribute. And we are going to change the way the tangent is set up. The tangent is the way the curve moves in and out of these keyframes. So uh, as default, it is a spline tangent. And what we want to do is use this button right here, which is a linear tangent. I'm going to move my cursor around a little bit. Uh, I'm going to click on my curve for the rotate Y of my Mercury planet, and then click this button right here that says it's a diagonal straight line. And that changes my curve to be straight linear in between these two points. Now what that'll mean is that it's a constant velocity throughout this entire time. So let's go back and watch this now. Let's hit play. So now it's not going to start slow. It's going to start at the same exact speed. And as the timeline reaches back to 360, it's going to continue its speed. It's not going to slow down at all. So here comes 360, same speed. It's not slowing down. Now take a look at the next planet, Venus, and see the difference there. Venus starts slow, it is fast in the middle ends slow so whereas mercury continues its speed last 30 frames or 60 frames merc or yeah, venus is slowing down so all we have to do is let's stop this for a second is select all of our uh, planets and i can do this all at once select venus earth and hold down control mars jupiter saturn uranus neptune pluto and i want to drag select on all of the green curves the other curves for the attributes are completely flat, as in there's no change in the value there. 
but uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So I have eight planets. So I want to drag select on all eight of these green curves that have vertical change to them. And if I click on that linear tangent button, that makes all of those curves completely straight, constant velocity between those two keyframes. So if you do that, now if we zoom out and go back to frame one and hit play, they will all have the same velocity or speed throughout the entire animation. There's no slowing down. Uh, they all have the same velocity. So it's not slowing down, it's a continuous motion. Okay, so something else that is not quite as natural is that they're all kind of orbiting around the same horizontal axis plane, which is not natural. Um, so one thing we can do is vary that axis that each planet is orbiting around the sun. Um, so we'll go back and start with Mercury again. And uh, what we want to do is the Z axis is what will change. But there's a keyframe on the z-axis, which means if I try to manually rotate this now, it's going to pop back to this zero default value. So with Mercury selected, I'm going to right-click on just the rotate z-axis attribute, and I'm going to choose break connection. So I right-clicked on just rotate z and choose break connection. What that does is that removes the keyframe for just that attribute. The animation is still on Mercury because that was on rotate Y. But what I want to do is just change that rotate angle of rotate Z so that Mercury doesn't rotate just horizontally. So let's take Mercury, rotate Z, and rotate that up. Maybe we'll put Mercury over here. And now if I hit play, it's going to still orbit around on rotate Y, but now the rotate Z angle has changed so that it's orbiting around a different axis. It was neat. So we can do that with every planet. I can go to Venus, right click on rotate Z, choose break connection, rotate that down some. So maybe we'll put the Venus right there. Uh, Earth, right click on rotate Z, break connection, and maybe Earth is gonna be up here. Here's Mars, right click on rotate Z, break connection. Maybe Mars is gonna be way over here. Here's Jupiter, break the connection on rotate Z. Maybe, uh, maybe Jupiter is gonna be right there. That looks like a good spot for Jupiter. And I'm just randomly choosing the position. Uh, break connection, rotate Z for Saturn, and we'll rotate Saturn like, um, let's rotate Saturn like horizontal. So it's more having a vertical action, I guess. Uranus, break the connection on rotate Z. Uh, we'll leave, well, let's put Uranus way over here. That'll work on that side. Maybe we'll leave Neptune on this side. So break the connection on rotate Z for Neptune. Maybe we'll move it up a little. That way. And then Pluto, break the connection to rotate Z. And we'll move Pluto, I don't know, way over here. Maybe up there. There's nothing up there in that angle. There we go. All right, but I'm not keyframing anything else. So now when I hit play, all the planets still orbit around, but it kind of looks like an atom uh, kind of motion now of uh, the electrons moving around and uh, in a circular way, but all different angles. So now it looks more like an actual solar system that has, uh, every planet has an individual orbit that's all spinning around the sun properly. All right, so that's some other ways that we can refine the animation. One final thing that we can do is uh, we can go to something like Earth, and we have Earth's uh, clouds. And over time, it's going to be kind of difficult to see as fast as Earth is going, but if you ever want to zoom in on the Earth, uh, we can add animation to Earth's clouds rotating around as well. So let's go to frame one with Earth's clouds selected. Hit the S to keyframe. Let's go to frame 360, and let's use something we did for the moon. We'll do uh, rotate Y negative 5760, I think is what it was. Yeah, negative 5760, and hit the S key. So that's gonna be kinda hard for us to see because of how fast the Earth is moving. 
Uh, but Earth will now have the planets that are spinning around the Earth. Um, so that's some other ways we can edit and adjust uh, the animation to make it more believable, more natural, and more interesting. One final thing we can do is take the curve for our spaceship motion path and in the channel box just turn off the visibility. If I type in zero for off, uh, that way that curve will not be visible. So we just turn off the visibility for that spaceship curve. I can turn off my grid and then now watch my animation play through and enjoy the animation. So let's hit play and watch it. All right, so we have our planets orbiting by a rotate base animation. Uh, we set up some parenting with the Earth and Earth's moon and clouds. We set up parenting with Saturn's rings. We change the pivot point for each planet so it rotates around the sun. We have a scale base animation for the sun so it pulsates in and out, uh, larger and smaller. We have a, an asteroid animation, uh, the asteroid moving from one side of the uh, space scene to the other. And then we have our spaceship that is following a motion path curve throughout the timeline. So this whole animation loops from frame 1 to 360. The only thing that doesn't loop is the position of the asteroid. But if we're zoomed in to this point of view, we can't really see that that asteroid is not looping properly. But this is a good and quick and easy way to set up a solar system animation that's still relative in the overall uh, solar system motion, but not uh, too slow and not too spread out to where we can't have an interesting animation.